You might think it's a ridiculous claim to say that drawing is so important it can be the difference between life or death, but sometimes it can be. This is Francis Wells, one of the UK's leading heart and chest surgeons. Every day he performs operations that can transform people's lives. It's an intense, exacting process that requires extreme concentration. So often, before he gets to work with the scalpels and forceps, he prepares himself with pen and paper. Surgery is all hand-eye coordination. And all surgery happens up there, not there. Uh, the surgery, it, what makes a good surgeon is decision-making uh, during the operation. For example, this is sitting in my office. It's a scrap of headed note paper where I was just working out how I might do a particular operation before I went to do it, thinking of where the incisions are and what to do. This is not done as a drawing to be exhibited. This is a personal drawing to think about what I'm actually about to do. And if you're not afraid of drawing, then it's a wonderful tool. Can I have the forceps? So, we're just using this as an exercise, but also to show truly. Um, we had mitral valve. We had a cleft all the way back. But Wells doesn't stop at using drawing in preparation for surgery. He can also be found sketching at the end of actual cardiac operations. In these situations, his medium changes from pen on paper to patient's blood on paper. It might look strange, but what he's doing is sharing knowledge, giving an instant replay of the procedures to those around him. The operation has a pace about it. You can't just stop every five minutes and say, well, you know, this, that and the other. So I find it a very good way when the operation's literally finished, the bit inside the heart, and you're waiting for the heart just to restore normal rhythm and so forth. You can actually convey what you might be doing in an operation. It, it is actually a wonderful medium to draw in because in cardiac surgery you dilute the blood and you can have blood that's pure blood or blood that is slightly diluted. And as, as um, one knows with people like Turner and so forth who use different strengths of media, uh, you can actually use different strengths of blood and it really does produce some wonderful pictures. The tradition of drawing as a medium used by those in the world of science as much as the world of art is centuries old. It was, after all, one of the first ways in which we understood human anatomy and how our bodies function. So it is that Wells's exacting surgical skills have been shaped by a remarkable series of studies made around 500 years ago by the great master of the Italian Renaissance, Leonardo da Vinci. There is no anatomy book ever produced over time that can match the beauty of these drawings. You pick up these drawings and the sheer beauty of them. Um, it is not just someone who can think and can apply sort of constructive thought. He can draw in such an engaging and beautiful way that uh, you want to look at the drawings for other reasons. That is why I say even now, even in a thousand years' time, you can have a dialogue with these drawings. Leonardo began his groundbreaking studies in the late 1400s, initially so he would better understand what made up the bodies that he drew and painted. Curiously, he had no actual training in anatomy or dissection. His research was ultimately a kind of giant compulsive project to satisfy his own voracious curiosity. For Leonardo, to study the functioning of the body was, in a way, to understand the soul. Among the greatest are these immensely complex drawings of the human skull. They're beautifully drawn, beautifully precise, full of rich detail, right down to the structures of the teeth. And in this one, he even attempts to pinpoint the seat of the soul, the sensus communis, hitting on what we now know to be the pineal gland. To draw is to look and look again, to take nothing for granted, Drawing was how Leonardo saw and thought, how he unlearned the mistakes of medieval anatomy and grasped some of the human body's most intimate secrets. In some cases, it would be hundreds of years before science finally caught up. For example, if 
he describes the mechanism by which what you eat in your stomach doesn't spill back into your throat all the time. And that has only been worked out in the last few years. And uh, the way he's thought through this predates modern thought uh, absolutely. He drew from what he regarded as the truth with honest uh, insight and observation. So you can actually start to communicate with him. And if you do that and you take these drawings seriously, there is information here which is relevant to modern day cardiac surgery. Really? Absolutely. In the early 1500s, Leonardo's project culminated in a series of obsessively intricate studies of the human heart. And in a truly across the centuries collaboration, Francis Wells has actually used them as the basis for a pioneering form of surgery. He studied how Leonardo broke down all the individual components of the heart, its openings and closings, the way the muscles expand and contract, how blood flows in and out, but most importantly, how the valves operate. Leonardo had been studying the behavior of liquids at the same time. He worked on dams and canal systems. And I think that must have helped him to understand the liquid engineering of the heart. One of his great insights was the realization that the coils or vortices formed by blood flow are a vital part of the closure mechanism of the mitral valve, a fundamental component of the heart's efficient functioning. Leonardo's insight has led Francis Wells actually to change the way he operates on the mitral valve. And I know for a fact that the procedure, call it the da Vinci cut, has been turning people who could barely walk into people who can run up the stairs two at a time. Do you think that these drawings contain within them other things that people haven't still quite twigged yet, if one, you know? Oh, I'm sure there are. I mean, it, one, one has to be careful in not romancing it too much and saying the solution to all our problems are here. They're not. But I think the essence of what we're seeing is someone who is absolutely, conspicuously honest. They're searching for the truth. Nowadays, by thinking about these observations that he made and taking it seriously, it can take you down lines of thought that you might work out yourself with other information that's available.